Okay, morning everyone. Morning. morning. Okay. A year ago, I was in high school, sophomore grade, or as we call in Indonesia, SMA 2, SMA 2. I always loved mathematics. And in the sophomore grade, I learned about derivative, I learned about statistics, I learned about probability theory, functions, and also trigonometry. But what I like the most is the probability theory. So, as another, uh, another regular student, I decided to learn about, more about what the school could teach me in Wikipedia. And when stumbling upon Wikipedia, I came across one number, set of numbers, that looked so fascinating, yet so mysterious. So I decided to ask my teacher. And he said that he doesn't know, he didn't know any Catalan numbers. Yes, the, uh, sorry. The number is called the Catalan numbers, and when my teacher said that, I was intrigued to find more about the Catalan numbers. And so I decided to bring this topic into my research, which I call Exploring the World of Catalan Numbers. I'm Steven Sinatra, and I am from the Indonesia team. So let me explain about Catalan numbers a bit. What is a Catalan number? <coughs> the Catalan number is dated back, to, the history of the Catalan number is dated back to the 1600s, where a Chinese mathematician have found the Catalan numbers. But two people are notably known for finding the Catalan numbers which are, one, Leonard Euler, Euler sorry, and two is uh, Eugene Charles Catlin, who also uh, take part in the name. The Catlin numbers have so many equations, which is this one. This one uses the factorials to calculate, and when tried on the 0 Catlin number to the 9 Catlin number, it results in this. 1, 1, 2, 5, 14, and so on. So let's try that equation, shall we? How about we try the fifth Catalan number uh, to equate it? Let's bring the equation back. And we change all the ends into 5. Calculating it will result in the fifth Catalan number, which is 42. That's my short explanation about the Catalan numbers. I'm going to move on into my research. So in my research, there are three main topics that I decided to bring on, which are, one, I have found a new equation, two, is a real life application based on the Catalan numbers, and three is the program that I have made to calculate Catalan numbers. Equation, application, program. These three main topics will be my research. I'm going to explain more about the, uh, the equation that I have found first. So the Catalan number is a combinatorial number, which, as all every other uh, combinatorial numbers, has a strong relationship with the Pascal's triangle. Now the Pascal's triangle has relationships, but what are they? I'm going to show you a, an image about that. This image belongs to Doug Lorison's, and it shows us that the Catalan numbers can be found by adding several numbers inside the Pascal's triangle. This pattern is found by the method palestration. But I'm not going to talk about palestration here. I'm going to talk about another way to find the Catalan numbers in the Pascal's triangle. And here it is. If I take the middle number of a second row in the Pascal's triangle, and then divide it with the second number in that row also, it will result in the Catalan number. This method, in fact, has, uh, is where the main equation belongs to. And also, what I have found is that if you take the middle number of a uh, first row in the Pascal triangle and then subtract it with the number diagonally aligned beside it, like so, this will result also in a Catalan number. 5 is the third Catalan number, which is found on the third first row of, of the Pascal triangle. With that explanation, here is my equation that I found. It uses the n k method, or as known as the combination method. This equation, when tried on the 34th Catalan number, are resulting in the accuracy of 96.67%, or 29 rise out of 30. 
This equation, however, lowers its accuracy when we are trying to calculate it with the bigger Kaplan number. That's the equation. Now I'm going to show you the application. The application, sorry, <coughs> I mean, this is, maybe you don't know what is, what is this, what is this, maybe you don't have any single, uh, single thought about what is this. But how about if I show you this? Maybe you have had it in your home as a souvenir or someone has given you as a gift. It's called the Matryoshka dolls or as known as the Russian nest nesting dolls. Now the Kaplan numbers has um, the Kaplan numbers has been found on the Matryoshka dolls, but with one simple rule. That simple rule is one doll could fit two, three, or four or more inside the dolls. So we are not looking at the size of the dolls. We are looking at that one doll could fit more. And so, how about we try uh, proving it? Here are three dolls that I have taken the top so that you can see more, uh, you can see clearly about the image. So, if we, uh, if we try to use the Kaplan number, there will be five combinations in this, uh, if there is three dolls, and this one is the first. And this is the second uh, combination. So one doll is stacked inside one another doll. And here's the third combination. It is the fourth, in which we try to use that rule. One doll could fit two inside it. And here's the fifth, which is uh, one doll, and then another doll, and then another doll put in, inside it. This proves that the application works. Now, moving on to the program. Um, I call this program the Kaplan Number Exploration Program, which I have made using the Microsoft Visual Basic 2010. And with this, I wanted to have uh, the program to have the feature, which is one, demonstrate the Matryoshka doll application I have shown you before. And if I wanted to do this, I'm going to need uh, to figure out how the algorithm works. And another feature that I have one wanted to show you here is the if I could find big Kaplan numbers, which I have to consider about the data type I should use to contain the numbers. And this is achieved by using the human calculation algorithm. I will show you later on. So here's the program. I actually have one ready to show you here. And here's the program. As you can see here, the Kaplan number exploration program could calculate until the 134th Kaplan number. And it could show you that uh, the application that I've shown you really works. But only for five dolls maximum. I, could, uh, I couldn't get more of that, sorry. So I'm going to do this as my future work. Um, going back to, my, uh, to what I'm going to show you. So, how, what's, uh, how is the algorithm that I use on that program? Here is the example of an algorithm that I wanted to use back when I was uh, trying to do the program. In here, we are trying to calculate it uh, manually, brutally, and by calculating the 6 factorial, and the 4 factorial, and 3 factorial, resulting in a big number, 720, and then dividing it, which results in 5. This one doesn't look so bad, is it? It doesn't. But how about we try to calculate the 50th Kaplan number? It's interesting. So let's try that. <coughs> Here is the equation, 100 factorial, which we wanted to calculate, and it results in this. Shocking. It has so, bad, uh, so many digits. In fact, uh, it doesn't end here. It has 148 digits on that. And when we try to calculate the 51 factorial and 50 factorial also, we will get 60 plus digits. All of this just to find the 50 capital number, which only has 28 digits long. It's wasteful. We don't need that. 
so the double data type in Microsoft Visual Basic 2010 is the biggest one, which can contain 309 digits in that. The Catalan, uh, 86 Catalan number has 59 digits, but to calculate it, we will need 172 factorial, which has 311 digits. This is too much. The double cannot contain that, so the program can only limit until 86 Catalan number. This sucks, really. So I'm not going to use this as my algorithm. Instead, I'm going to show you here. Here's the newer and better algorithm. So as you can see here, uh, the program will try to calculate it by using our method where we calculate this without using a calculator. As you can see here, the program will try to expand the factorials first, resulting in that, which will stop until 51 factorial. How could the program achieve that? Sorry. Uh, the 51 factorial will be divided uh, into 1. So how does the program achieve that? Is by um, subtracting 100 factorial with the number, the biggest number in there, the 51 factorial, which results in 49. That means the program will try to expand the numbers 49 times, which is until 51. So moving on, uh, when we get this, the program gets this, uh, it will try to divide the numbers one by one, uh, which results in two. If we try to de uh, sorry, divide the first numbers, 100, with the first numbers below, 50. And then when we get two, uh, the program will try to divide that two uh, with 49, 48, and so on until it reaches one. After that, it will take the second number, 99, and then do the same, uh, same process again. This will result in the one. 1.97, uh, exponential 27. So, and in that program, we have the nesting dolls algorithm, which I will show you here. Let's say we take three dolls inside. The program will show three dolls. And then since the top of the dolls will be uh, so annoying to look, the program will try to take the top out of it. And that program, we'll get the data for position. And the program gets the combination set and positions the dolls. For example, if we wanted to find the third combination in the three dolls, the program will get the numbers and then positions the dolls so that it could be like this. And that's the program. In conclusion, I have three main, equation, uh, three main points on my research. First is the equation. Second is the application, the Matryoshka DOS, and three is the program, the Catalan Number Exploration Program. This ends my presentation. Thank you for listening and agreeing with me that the Catalan Numbers is a fascinating and mysterious numbers.